Curso friends, welcome back to Opus Eleni, where we put the goth in high gothic. First of all, I wanted to take a second and thank everyone for being patient with this video's delay. I seem to have the worst luck with hard drives dying. Luckily, everything was recoverable and I've added another two layers of redundancy to my storage situation. So two weeks ago, I was staring down the barrel of my Berenice Spring event and wanted a bit of an outfit refresh. The theme was late 15th century Italian, specifically the 1497 marriage of Bianca Maria Sforza of Milan and King Maximilian I of Austria and Germany. Partner and I had planned to attend together, and very luckily, he already had a perfect outfit for the time period. I had already wanted to take that leftover fabric and make some accessories so we'd coordinate, and this seemed like the perfect opportunity. I made some pin-on sleeves like the ones I made last year, which I will wear with the black coat hardy I made um, more than a year ago. I also wanted to make a new bigger belt pouch for outfits that don't quite go with my scruffy pilgrim script, so I'll be making a trapezoidal ring pouch like these ones. They're a couple centuries earlier than the wedding, but that just means they're closer to my preferred time period anyway. And since the black and silver brocade screams classy goth, I'm just gonna lean into it and accessorize my black St. Brigida cap with a black linen veil that I will bead in my heraldic colors. Yes, those just happen to be black, silver, and red. Look, I have a brand, okay? So everyone grab your cuppa. Um, this week I am drinking Mary Shelley from the UK company Rosie Tea. Drinking tea named after the ultimate goth icon just seemed appropriate. It is a black tea, uh, heavily flavored with violet, and I am drinking it from my new violet teacup, which was a gift from my very sweet friend Colvina, who is sadly moving very far away. I'm also in the market for more teas to try, so tell me your favorites in the comments. Let's get into it. The proportions of the pouch are dependent on the size of the ring, which is a three inch macrame ring I got at my local big box craft store, so I will use that to make the trapezoid. I'm referencing the museum pieces, of which there are several for measurements and to eyeball the general shape. I'll mark the pattern shapes of the bag front and flap on the pattern and use a tracing wheel to prick dotted lines. Then I can draw the back, front, and flap onto both linen and brocade using chalk to trace the dotted lines and then connecting them. The pattern excludes seam allowances, so I'll add those when I'm cutting them out. 
I thought about the different ways I could sew these up and again referred back to the extant pieces and decided to sew the brocade and lining of each piece together separately and then attach them after. In order to do that, I'll sew each brocade and lining piece right sides together, leaving a small gap on the bottom edge. Then I can clip the corners and each curve before turning them right side out and giving them a good pressing. Quick break to cover the ring with black tool tape to disguise the metal and then I can start attaching the main bag pieces together with a tightly spaced whip stitch. I'm using grey silk buttonhole thread for strength and also because it looks pretty. Next I'll attach the ring to the pouch with a similar whip stitch method using silver on the bottom half of the ring and black on the top half. Then I'll attach the flap the same way, sewing the curves together so that it covers the top half of the ring and adding a linen loop at the top to attach to my belt. The last step is to make six tassels to attach to the bottom of the bag edge and flap. I'm using silver silk thread from Eowyn De Weaver and tying them together with black buttonhole twist which I will also use to attach the tassels to the pouch.
I'm starting out with some of the bigger scraps of brocade and my standard sleeve pattern with sleeve head folded down so it's straight across. I had to go back and take a look at partner's gown thingy to make sure the pattern was the right way up. Nothing would be more embarrassing than standing next to him with my sleeves upside down. This fabric frays so badly, it was hard to stay ahead of it while I was filling the seam allowances. I ended up keeping my set of snips right by me to trim down the frayed threads before turning the allowances under. Instead of my usual filing stitch, I went with a simple running stitch with black buttonhole silk twist. I can take more stitches at once and they won't really show up on the outside since the brocade is so busy. After all the seam allowances are felled, it's time to hem the top and bottom of the sleeve, again trimming away any of the fraying threads, and then the sleeves are done. They are such an easy accessory to make. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kovi members. Your support and the support of my members and croissants makes it much easier to do what I do and provide quality content for all of you. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to see me make a matching veil. Okay, we are on a time crunch for this bit of the project. One of my viewers, Lisa, tipped me off to this delicious handkerchief weight black silk from Burnley and Trowbridge that looked perfect for a veil. I ordered a yard the Monday before the event and crossed my fingers hoping it would get to me in time. Luckily it did and it is fantastic. So smooth and light and airy. I wish I'd gotten more of it. I might get more of it. After cutting the fabric to the correct dimensions, 33 inches by 29 inches or 89 centimeters by 74 centimeters, I'm improvising a compass to curve the corners so that the veil will be oval. Then I can hem it with a magic veil stitch before I start beading.
I'm using the same basic beading pattern for this veil as the last veil that I made. I'm just changing the colors to match my heraldry. So it'll be three silver beads, one black bead, a bigger red bead, and then one black and three silver again. Once I'm happy with the drape of each bead, I'll mark the distance on my finger in order to maintain consistency. I'm knotting the thread in between each loop as well so that just in case the string breaks, I only lose a loop or two. Thank you for joining me today and coming along as I indulge my not-so-inner goth. My high school self would be so proud. 
This is definitely an outfit that's more historically inspired but modernly informed than some of my others, but that's perfectly fine with me. Historical fidelity exists on a spectrum and I am comfortable at just about all points on it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, click the bell if you like taking your chances with notifications. If you want to find me on social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, but the place you can find me most reliably is my Discord. If you're interested in sewing history or a wonderfully supportive community, come join us at the link in the description. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Whew.